All right, hi, welcome to the Deck Network. I'm your host, Mike Danzilio, and here's our guest host today, Mr. Sean Wakefield from Curve Your Deck. How are you doing, Sean? Great, Mike, glad to be here. Okay, great. Sean and I have been working together for many, many years, and uh, if you watch us, you'll, you'll realize that we certainly know each other well. Now, on today's episode of the Deck Network, we are going to review an article that was in the September and October of 2011 Deck Builder Magazine. Now, Deck Builder Magazine is a tremendous uh, periodical it comes out bi-monthly. It's put out by Handley Wood, and uh, this article I thought was great, and I wanted to do a feature on it. But instead of having me talk, tell you a little bit about it, let's talk to to uh, the gentleman who edited the article, and he worked. Hi, today we're talking to a friend of mine, Mr. Andy Engel from Handley Wood's Professional Deck Builder Magazine. Uh, Andy, pleasure to meet you. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about your publication? Sure. Professional Deck Builder Magazine uh, is a trade-only magazine. It's aimed at professional deck builders, of all people. Uh, it goes out to about 20,000 of them. And uh, most of the articles are, in fact, written by professional deck builders. Uh, and it's very specific, hands-on, useful information uh, aimed at helping these guys do their job better. Uh, last week, I read an article written by Andy, and it was a, it was it was titled "Deck Built to Fail." It was a deck built to fail. A deck built to fail, and I'm going to do a piece on that, and this will be in the part of the piece. You want to tell us a little bit about the article? Sure. Uh, actually, I didn't write the article; I edited it. It was written by a fellow named Jim Eggert, who is a building inspector in New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, this particular deck uh, was built without a permit, and if you can imagine something being wrong with the deck, it was wrong with this deck. From undersized uh, joists, undersized beams, uh, improper connectors, sheetrock screws being used to fasten structural connectors, you name it, it was wrong with this deck. And it's in the magazine and it's available uh, online. Can I plug my website? You certainly can. Uh, you can get the, uh, the content of the magazine for free online at deckmagazine.com. Uh, please feel free to visit and leave your comments. Okay, thanks, Andy, and uh, let's get right into this. Uh, it was written by Mr. Jim Eggert. He was a building inspector in the town of New Haven, Connecticut, and uh, he said that somebody or a city housing inspector asked him to check out a deck he had seen on a three-family tenement. He said, in what turned out to be an understatement, something didn't look right. So. Uh, Something doesn't look right right from here. What do you think, Sean? <laughs> looks sick and hideous yeah, to me, man. Okay, so before, Some butcher did this. <laughs> so before visiting the property, Jim looked up the information available to the address because it's a three-family dwelling. The International Building Code, or the IBC, would apply rather than the International Residential Code, which is limited to one- and two-family dwellings. So what we usually talk about on the DEC network is decks for one family or residential homes and that was that's always coveted by the international residential code so the the only building permit on file was an old one for an electrical upgrade now once he was on the site he found a 16 foot by 8 foot three story deck with stair assembly which he called early paddock style I'd say that's a fairly accurate representation. Looks like early panic style yes. to me. Okay. The owner had hired a contractor to remove the old porches and build this new structure to serve as a secondary egress. It goes on in saying that he was trying to get rid of some of the interior stairs and put it on the outside of the stairs to give himself some more uh, square footage on the inside, probably put another bedroom in there to try to get higher rents for it. And uh, unfortunately, the deck didn't meet code. In fact, it looked like had someone had been trying to build a deck that violated every typical code requirement starting at the foundation and going up from there. So let's look at some photos and this is the first picture and he says on shaky ground. The foundation appeared to be constructed on six 12 inch diameter piers arranged in two rows of three and uh, what do you think about this beam right here, Sean? That thing is not doing anything. That that's the the epitome of how to do something wrong. Okay. You'd and never put a beam on the flat. It's always got to be vertical. The strength is in being vertical. Yes. Okay. But because the two by eight was on the flat, it isn't much of a beam. The inner be piers weren't really supporting anything. That meant the outer three piers and the ledger were holding up the three stories of the deck. And he now, talks about replacing this beam with an actual beam on what he would try to do. 
But that was going to be a tough fix because that thing has to all be supported. So the next photo, he has um, framing nightmares. The ledger board the ledges were nailed directly into exposed studs of the house wall. There were no bolts, flashing, or sheathing. I could look into the wall cavity and see the lath and plaster on the inside wall. The contractor told me the siding repair is the owner's responsibility. It doesn't matter to me who does it, it has to be done. Now that's really pushing the, the uh, pushing it off on the homeowner. <laughs> okay, so then we're going to get into the uh, inadequate joist attachment. Many of the joist hangers that attach to the deck's 2x8 joist and 2x10 rim joist were the wrong size. The single 2x10 rim joist actually do calculate to be adequate support, but he could not find one nail in any of the joist hangers. The contractor instead used drywall screws which lack anything, any meaningful shear strength and aren't corrosion resistant. And uh, another problem is, look at the next photo, this is holding up the stairs. Now he did use a proper stair hardware, which maybe he just stumbled upon that. But there, the, well, another, another problem is that many of the holes in the joist hangers were unfilled. Some hangers, like those on the stringers holding up the stair run, were installed with one or two screws. All right, let's talk about this for a second. This happens, I see this all the time, and it just happens to be one of the things that just drives me crazy. I guess you could call it a pet peeve of mine. There's only two methods of attaching a joist hanger. You can use a joist hanger screw which is a number 10 and it has a certain shear strength to it or a joist hanger screw which you can see is um, screw twice. Yes, is produced by the Simpson company it's an inch and a half long screw, it's a number nine, uh, but I'm sure that Simpson has calculated it, that it has a certain shear off strength above the recommended minimum requirements. Now a box like this, 500 quantity, costs about $55. So I wouldn't think that, you know, people use them, but they use them sparingly because of the cost on it, but they work great. They're easy to go in, you have a little nut driver and you can shoot them right in, but they are expensive. So if you have a contractor who's going to use screws and he's not using the structural screws and he's using sheetrock screws or worse even a roofing nail which you see oh, all, the, all the time. And we go to the, he calls this, uh, this paragraph nail troubles. While the joist hangers lack nails, the rim board corners the ends of the horizontal railings, and the single headers were nailed with too many nails. For example, uh, Jim counted 28 nails at one rim to corner post connection. Though the codes specify only a minimum number of nails for certain connections, common sense would tell a carpenter that using too many nails will crack the lumber and reduce its structural capacity. Anyway, a nailed connection wasn't adequate in these places, and even if it were, none of these nails were galvanized or stainless steel. So he could see the corrosion stains on the wood. Okay, next we have a, a, the uh, paragraph, he has it titled, Scary Stairs. Now, all five runs of the stairs had rise and tread discrepancies and undersized landings, and two of the runs had headroom issues. The rises, whose heights were supposed to be within three-eighths of an inch of each other in each flight, were all over the place. One of the flight had rises ranging from six inches to as much as seven and a half inches. These rises were open, meaning right here, you, if we see that on old decks, can't do that anymore because that's greater than four inches right there. Um, and uh, some of the treads were only eight inches wide and the uh, requirements for this cry were an 11 inch depth of a tread. Okay, the stairs had some other code issues. There were no graspable handrails and the stringers were overcut, as it shows in the figure right here. Plus, window glazing. Now, there's a glass, a window right toward the bottom of the stairs. And because of the lack of safety glazing, the window could be broken by a snow shovel or someone could fall through the inconsistent stairs and be cut. All right, let's go back to this one right here, Sean. How difficult is this to cut a stringer properly? It's not if you know what you're doing or you just take the time to do it correctly. There's no reason to be a butcher like this. What you do is you cut in and you stop 
and use a jigsaw, a handsaw, or even a sawzall to finish the cut. The guards, or the guard rails or railings, were nailed to the corner post with non-galvanized fasteners. Adding some galvanized screws would help, but there were more problems. The horizontal rails were spaced more than four inches apart, which is again by code. Now all the railings that we talk about here on the deck network, and because uh, we like the, the, uh, the major decking companies like Trex and TimberTech, and all of their rails are less than four inches apart, the balusters. So he says that the, uh, the space between the stair guards and the back of the stair treads exceeded six inches. Now that's this little section right here. So if you have a railing that comes down right on top of those stairs, you're going to have one section that's going to be a little bit more than six inches. I've never heard of a, a deck failing because you know, of that. There's one thing that the contractor did correct. He used 42 inch rails because in a commercial building you need to use a 42 inch high rail. Okay, now listen to this next picture here. It looks like he reused an old 6x6. Six six. Yeah. Like beaver's been chewing on yeah. that Yeah, it says, okay, the, uh, the corner posts were a substantial 6x6, six six, but the half lap joints, meaning that he may have had some 6x6s six that were 12 foot long and needed them 24 foot long, instead of looking around for a 24 foot long 6x6. Six he uh, just joined them together, and that was inadequate. All right, Jim goes on to say in his next paragraph titled Red Tag, this deck was a study in what not to do. I had no qualms about being the bad guy and red tagging it to stop at any continued use. The owner had been cited for building without a permit and as required to correct all violations before the deck can be used. Now, because he had a signed contract with a licensed contractor, the owner applied for reimbursement from the state's contractor fund, which provides up to $15,000 to remedy unfinished jobs or poor workmanship. The money comes out of a home improvement licensing fee attached to every building permit issued in the state of Connecticut. The state will aggress aggressively seek repayment from the contractor who did the work. Although the owner now has a building permit to install a properly built multi-story deck, no remediation work has been performed to this date. My last conversation with the owner stipulated that prompt corrective action is needed and that can't wait for reimbursement from the state. His immediate choices are fixing the deck or removing it. Otherwise, the city will initiate court action, which will include a fine, deck removal, and by a city-hired contractor, and a lien on the property. Hey, Jim Eggert is a building inspector in the city of New Haven, Connecticut. Jim did a great job on this article. And we didn't really want to just show this article to try to trash a contractor, but you always want to remember, when you're hiring a contractor, as I say, there are two types. There are professional con deck contractors who know all these little codes requirements. Decking is a specialty. And then there is a carpenter who thinks that he can build a deck. All right, let's talk about the deck network for a second. Now the deck network, we loved everything to do with decks. And uh, we put all our information out on our website. And because decks are a a, a great industry. We have a lot of fun doing it. The, uh, the uh, finished product just looks great. We just love playing with them and looking at them and we sell them and we just have a good time doing it. But uh, it's very important that these decks are built safely. Uh, the North American Deck and Rail Association tells us that of the 40 million decks in the U.S., 20 million of them are unsafe. So uh, you want to take a look at your deck, and uh, we'll talk about that in an upcoming episode on the Deck Network. Now, if you're interested in the Deck Network, you can join the, neck, the Deck Network by going to our homepage on the decknetwork.com and signing up. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And if you're doing any research for Backyard Project, you'd want to watch all our videos. If you have a friend, you can refer them to that. Our format is to produce videos that are less than 15 minutes in length and have to post one to two a week. In each episode, we'll pick a topic and discuss it. So if you would like to suggest an episode or be on the show in person or on Skype, because we have the technology to do that, just contact me at mike at thedecknetwork.com. Again, have a great day. And we'll see you on another episode.